Welcome back. <clears throat> um, so we were talking about stream stages. So we can talk about channels. We talk about the stage of the stream, the age of the stream. And all of this goes into describing the characteristics of the stream and kind of what it's doing and the, and the ge part of geology, uh, the, the role in geology the stream has. Um, so again, just to, to go over this, because I, I felt like I went a little bit fast. But a youthful stream, typically straighter stream channels, in a canyon or some steep terrain, V-shaped canyon, really no floodplain. Mature stream, so a little bit of a floodplain, a little tiny floodplain, kind of really carving out a valley floor um, to, to the canyon. It's not just V-shaped, and there's a, a little bit of um, flatness to it on either side. And it may begin to meander a little bit, but for the most part, still pretty much straight stream. And then as you get into old stream age, so big old meandering stream, oxbow lakes, wide floodplains, that's indicative of a uh, an old age stream. A stream that's been around for a while. Cross-section, youthful, uh, pretty much confined to a V, a V-shaped channel, whereas mature, uh, in, even into old age, you're getting into a very wide floodplain. It's kind of probably the easiest way to see how much floodplain does it have. So in any case, all the water that flows through these streams, all the water in these lakes and in these swamps, where is it coming from? Where does all that water come from? Well, it comes from precipitation, whether it's snow falling and then melting, or just rain or any other form of precipitation that falls on the land. And water will always find the lowest spot possible. It's gravity. Um, so water will always flow to the lowest spot possible, and that's usually these stream channels. So any precipitation that falls into an area eventually gets funneled into a small stream channel, which kind of funnels into a bigger stream channel, which funnels into an even bigger stream channel. And the where all this water goes, if it goes to a particular spot, that's known as a drainage basin. A drainage basin is a collection area of precipitation, rain, snow, etc. Um, or another way to put it, it's total area from which water flows into a particular stream. So what you're seeing here on this map um, are different, not necessarily different drainage basins, but illustrates where this water goes. For instance, in the United States, if any water f falls pretty much in the central U.S., anything east of the Rockies, but not quite over on the East Coast. Anything in this pinkish, reddish color, all that water will eventually flow into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, all the purple areas, any of that water will eventually flow into the Pacific Ocean, like here in Arizona. Uh, on the East Coast, around the Great Lakes, all of that water flows into the Atlantic Ocean. So wherever precipitation falls, it usually gets funneled someplace. And the... Uh, collection area of precipitation is called a drainage basin. A divide is a topographic high, like a mountain range or, or some sort of high point that separates adjacent drainage basins. So this is just a general look at where the water is going, but to break down the United States into separate drainage basins, uh, basically that dictates in what stream or in what body of water do the, do the, does this water eventually flow. So, for instance, anywhere pretty much in the central U.S. Um, is uh, the, any precipitation that falls here uh, eventually flows into the Missouri or Mississippi River. So this is known as the Missouri-Mississippi River drainage basin. Mississippi River is a very large river. The reason being its drainage basin is enormous. Anything that falls here will eventually flow into the uh, Missouri or Mississippi River, even the Ohio River, all, all flow into the Mississippi River. So you're getting this large catchment area, hence the Mississippi River is just such a big, giant river. Um, for, in Arizona, we're in the Colorado River drainage basin, so you can see any drop of precipitation, anything whatsoever that falls in Arizona, snow, rain, whatever, eventually gets funneled into the Colorado River and out into the Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific Ocean. Um, let me see, anything else worth noting? Yeah, so different areas of the country uh, are kind of dictated under different um, 
drainage basins. And what separates these drainage basins is topographic high points. For example, the Great Divide, that's the highest elevations of the country running along the Rocky Mountains. So everything on the left side of the Great Divide flows into the Pacific. Everything on the right side, the east side of the Great Divide, eventually flows into the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic Ocean. So this is a great example of a, of a divide, a topographic high, that separates out uh, drainage basins. For example, right along this divide, depending on where the precipitation lands, it's either going to flow into the Mississippi drainage basin or flow into the Colorado River drainage basin. And again, in Arizona, on all these numerous waterways, every drop of precipitation, snow, rain, what have you, eventually makes its way into the Colorado River. For example, uh, the Salt River flows into the Gila River, which flows into the Colorado River. The, I don't know, uh, San, Pedro, San Pedro River flows into the Gila River, which flows into the Colorado River. The Little Colorado River flows into the Colorado River. So everything eventually flows in Arizona into the Colorado River. And so we have a pretty diverse waterway system in, the, in, the, in Arizona. We don't often think about it, but we do. So here's a, a list of the, the 10 longest rivers in, the U, or in Arizona. All right? um, 10 longest rivers in Arizona, in parentheses, in the USA. So for instance, the Colorado River is the longest river in Arizona. It's actually the fifth longest in the, the US. It starts up in Colorado, makes its way through Arizona. The Gila River um, actually starts in New Mexico. It's the second longest river that flows through Arizona and the 27th longest in the, the U.S. Then you have uh, the Little Colorado River. Uh, then you have the Salt River, the Santa Cruz River, the Verde River, uh, kind of past uh, Prescott and down into the Phoenix area, the uh, Puerco River, the Virgin River uh, over here the San Francisco River and the San Pedro River. So in the Phoenix area, so Phoenix is located here, just north of the Salt River, and between the Verde River and the Agua Fria River, and Avondale is right here at the confluence of the Salt River, the Gila River, and the Agua Fria River. In fact, that's where PIR, or I should say the Phoenix Raceway, the NASCAR track is right there. So historically, before a lot of these were dammed up, these rivers, flowed all year long. Hence, there was a lot of uh, Native Americans in this area because, and what initially drew a lot of people to live in this area and farm in this area was, at one point, there was a lot of water. Now, Agua Fria River is dammed up at Lake uh, Pleasant. The Verde River is dammed up at Bartlett Lake. Salt River is dammed up a half a dozen times. The Gila River is dammed up. So, this water doesn't flow into Phoenix or into, yeah, into the Phoenix area anymore. So we used to have a lot more water. Now we don't. Before we move on, let me give you another part of the super secret code. It is the number four. You got me? The number four. Let's go ahead and pause there. Excuse me. Um, when we come back, we'll talk about some additional stream landforms. We talked about some. We'll expand on those and discuss a little bit more. See you back here in just a second. <laughs> 